Light in the car is digital, intelligent, emotional, and safer than ever before. And sometimes the car even talks to us and shows us this is an Audi. And with that, spot on and welcome. Welcome to the Tech Talk on Light. I'm delighted on behalf of the entire Audi communication team that you're back with us here in this format in which we can stay in touch with you even in these difficult times where traveling is so difficult. Now, you may ask yourself, why are these guys at Audi talking about light? Very simple, because we believe that we're heading into new dimensions. Is that right, Steffi? Indeed, Wolfgang. Light is no longer just a function. No, today we want to open up new perspectives of light that even during the day, light is a given in road traffic simply to avoid accidents. But more important, light also has a very emotional side to it. Every car gets its own light design and that's a very individual character. In any case, light technology has made a huge leap forward in its development and this is exactly what we want to talk about today. Exactly. We will show you the milestones in our light technology, but we'll also show you how the light is entering a new dimension, especially when you come up to look at personalization, how Audi is developing light and you, I'm just speaking of digital data and running light, digital matrix LED lights and digital OLED. And likewise, we're also looking at the future, Wolfgang. Namely, when you look at light design and light technology, there's a lot more coming in the way of exterior communication and personalization. In any case, we want to give you an opportunity to talk and research directly with us because we're sending to you live from a studio here at the Audi headquarters in Ingolstadt. And I hope you will use this opportunity. Indeed, very important here is, of course, we've got colleagues here from light design and light technology with us. And that exactly is the success recipe at Audi, that these two departments work so closely together. Thanks, Steffi. We'll see each other in a minute when we talk with the journalists in the Q&A session. Before that, though, as you know, we always have the same matrix. We'll start out in the first half by looking at what's new. What have we got on offer when it comes to light? And that is followed by hopefully your questions, your opinions in the Q&A session, because you can get connected with us live, either with the icon of the hand or send us your questions using the chat function. So we look forward to that and we'll start with a review over the last 20 years of light development at Audi. At Audi. The chronology of light is not only a story of improving sight, but of igniting ideas and innovation, of breaking old habits into pieces, to create space for the new. It's a story of a luminous power, of energy efficiency, of making light adaptive dynamic, and even three-dimensional. And thanks to visionary engineering, foresight is a crucial part of our DNA. The roads of tomorrow will be illuminated in high resolution by a brilliant Audi technology that even communicates with its surroundings. Introducing the Digital Matrix Light. Well, we've seen how light technology has developed over the last decades, thanks also to the introduction of the LED technology. And there's one guy at Audi who was always right at the very forefront of development, Stefan Bellitz. Now, Stefan, you're the head of the light development of Audi, and you are one of the, well, co-authors. Yes, indeed, we brought great topics to the road. Let's have a look at the timetable. In 2004, it started with the introduction of the LED daytime running light. Indeed, in the hour 8, W12, the world annual production in automotive able LED lights came here in that car, so we were really very much at the front of the LED issue at the time. 2007 then, as of then, you were able to have the Audi A4 with a clear, distinct light signature. Yes, I remember how my neighbor came proud home with that new daytime running light, that pearl chain in the A4. 2008 then, the introduction of the full LED headlight in the Audi R8 V10 Plus. 
Yes, also ahead of its time, that car, because the legislation wasn't ready there and we got an exemption for that car. And the EU Commissar, first of all, signed this actually, that special permission that we would bring LED lights to the road. 2012 then, the dynamic turning light in the Audi R8 came to the road. Indeed. I remember going to Geneva to the United Nations to discuss whether or not this is a safety advantage or not. It was approved because it's clearly, well, distinguishable where the car is heading and was a great safety feature. And this was really a time when you had one after the other. In 2013, the Audi Matrix headlight came to market. Well, here we're quite proud of this as engineers because the entire industry told us this is not going to be possible physically what we're trying to do here. But now it has become standard in all our cars, including the adaptive high beam. 2014 then, with the laser high beam, we actually had a beam going up to the ISS. Yes, that's right. That was quite a memorable advertising spot. That's right. That was great. With that extra light from the laser, the range is really impressive. 2016 then, we really caught a stir with the rear light of the TT RS. Yes, that was the first OLED rear light. That was the first time we actually brought OLED technology to the car. And also at the time, the industry said, impossible, not ready. And then in 2019, the e-tron and e-tron S for the first time came with the DMD technology on board. Yes, indeed. I mean, this is this video projector technology now in the car, which is a real functional quantum leap. Yes, we will hear about this more later, but now in 2020, in the here and now, we've got the digital OLED technology, indeed, which offers us the possibility to really set the design apart and has extra functionalities on board, but we'll hear more about this later. And in the Q5, you can actually experience this for the first time. So, Stefan, from the incandescent bulb to the modern LED technology, what are the advantages? But look, the bulb was a wear and tear part. You all remember, you had to replace them. Today's LEDs would last a lifetime of the car. So those times of having to replace the bulb are over. And of course, efficiency of LED technology is also clearly in a different ballgame. Less energy, a little disadvantage is, of course, we've got less dissipating heat at the front. And now in the winter, you want to de-ice and want to have a warm headlight. But we've got a nifty trick here because we've got our own CFD simulation department that really made calculations. How can I get the dissipating heat from the LED and transport it to the front of the headlight so that that can defrost and defog quickly? And we are benchmark here when it comes to defrosting of our headlights. But today, it's not just a matter of technology. Today, it's also a matter of looking at the light philosophy of AI, which, of course, is always the result of the interplay of designers and the engineers. And so, Cesar Montara is here as a representative of designers. He is the head of the light design at Audi. So, tell us, what about this philosophy? And how do you work with the engineers? You're right. It's really a very close collaboration. We, we create Forschung durch Technik. We make engineering skills visible, but we also, of course, shape the character of the brand and each model. To this end, we've got a very clear design principle. We use the entire width of the car and the model line, meaning we've got long lines with accentuations on the outside, which makes the car clearly detectable. Also at night from far off, you notice, hey, this is an Audi. But the closer you get, you can see, ah, here, this is a segmented light element which means you can here also distinguish the different body shapes of the Audis. And with that, you can really underline the character of each and every model line. All in all, of course, light becomes more of an event and an experience and starts, of course, on the exterior, but you also see it inside the cabin where you have culture lighting and ambient lighting to create this atmosphere inside the cabin well, that shows the customer, you can tweak, you can adjust the colors in the amber lighting. You can have that very personalized, different brightness, different colors, a great experience also inside. But of course, today is all about the exterior light at the front and rear. Indeed. But Stefan, if you test it, are you always forced to drive at night? Well, in reality, yes. But thanks to our new light assistance system that we have since 2015, we just have to take the cars downstairs into the basement where we're then in a complete dark area at the daytime. Great, well, facilitation for our work. And here we get together often with the designers to see how does the light really look like. But of course, we can also test new functionalities, try them out and play around with them and then have them pre-prepared for the night trip. But we can, as you say, save some of these night trips in that light assistance system bring the functions quicker to the road. 
I can tell you, it's a great setting down there. You can see it here in the background, that light tunnel, you really go down here into the caverns, into the underbody, so to say, of the factory in Ingolstadt. But over the last years, you've really brought new light technologies to market, developed them. Stefan, so tell us, how have they affected their light philosophy? Well, the key word really is digitization. We brought the digital matrix light. We brought the digital OLED to market. And at the end of the day, if you, if you look at digitization, it's like a shift in perspective. So far, the light was something for the driver. But now, light becomes to become more a tool of visual communication that you communicate with other traffic participants, with pedestrians, with oncoming traffic. And so you use the light more as a communicative tool, much more. And digitization is, of course, also for you designers very important. I mean, they no longer just walk, <laughs> work with, with a drawing pen today. No, we work fully digitally, you're quite right. But of course, digitization and networking is vitally important. And it's, it's an important interplay and becomes to play an ever more important role, actually, in our work. Because it's not just a matter of looking at light objects front and rear. No, we are developing what we would call a light language important to have that language for communication. And of course, thanks to digitization, we can also bring light to movement in our various signatures and scenarios, which of course also well, shapes the character of Audi and the cars even more. And digitization will also enable us to give customers the possibility to, well, develop his own light signatures if you want, or personalize them, or as I like to say, yes, have them a bit more bespoke. Well, dear viewers, you are the experts, you are the professionals, you test our cars, and also those, of course, of our competitors. We think light is an important topic that you should really delve deeply into. And maybe in the tests, you could also take a closer look at what we can offer. And here, Stefan, of course, we recommend to, to look at key technologies and analyze them in more detail. Quite rightly so. We've got different technologies, but the LED is the most important one because that's really forward-looking and has huge potential going forward. LED technology is, if you want, the basis from which we start and the main light source that also supports us in the functionalities. And of course, if we use laser, if we use laser technology, then we can have a very concentrated light beam to have an extra range of the beam. But of course, with the OLED technology, we also have the possibility to illuminate bigger areas and to have more area light deployed in and on the car. Good example is, for example, here our Audi A8, current generation. That, that, that is benchmark, really, because it has all these technologies on board. The HD matrix at the front, which in this multi-lines will react to oncoming traffic, will detect it, and then in different stages will take out that high beam so it doesn't glare oncoming traffic. So you can always keep the high beam activated. You don't have to tweak around with it all the time. And as I say, you don't dazzle anybody up front or oncoming traffic. Great easing of the work of the driver. Then we've got these functions of detecting pedestrians. And of course, with the laser light, you double the range of the beam, which is, I can tell you, a simple joy of going on a long cross-country road with this huge beam up front. And of course, with the old technology in the rear, it's nicely rounded out where you can have these great light scenarios. Uh, light scenarios don't really just look good, but also add to the safety aspect. Absolutely, so this is an important aspect. The dynamic turning light was the first example for this dynamic light communication. It's good because you notice it's not just nicely to look at, but it's also a very clear indication where the car is going. With that dynamic turning light, you show everybody else which direction you will be headed. And of course, that increases safety. And even if, for example, you don't see the car at a specific angle, you will instantly understand what is meant with this swoosh. Now, this is something we want to take forward into the future. And thanks to digitization, we have completely new means available here to increase that communication, that safety communication. One example for that progress that we can see across all the model lines is here, the Audi A3 Sportback, right next to me here, as you see it. Because here, this is the daytime running light that now for the first time is also digitized. What's the benefit, Stefan? Well, look, daytime running light is, of course, a function, as it says. You have it on during the day. And the legislator really wanted to distinguish a dormant car, standstill car, from a driving car. And 
and also to indicate to other traffic participants, oh, here, with that light, you can assess the speed and the distance of that car much better. And digital, of course, is a new tool because with that, we can now, well, distinguish between the different lines of a model, which means you, the designers, you can stress the character of the car. Absolutely. You see it nicely here. That's in the model family, which has and comes with different light signatures, either horizontal or vertical lines. And that means you can underline the specific character of a model with its line. But another good example here, or another example, if you so want, is the three you see here. We've got 15 LEDs in these pixel fields. But here on my tablet, I will try to show you what else we can do. Namely... Take the Icon, our show car from 2017. It has a much, much bigger field of pixels at the front. And if I just draw this on my tablet here, as we well work right now in the design, I just take here a typical Audi feature by stressing the width, the horizontal light lines. And I, I just try to do draw with my fingers on a tablet and you can see I make this little accentuation on the outside to create what looks like an eye because that gives the car this extra character. Now let's say I take this field that I've just drawn here and with my rubber element I well just delete if you want or blot out some of these pixel fields and with that if I project this now onto the car itself onto the icon itself here you see it and yes, in a second, the Audi icon has this very distinct face. Good, good, and easy to distinguish at night and at day. It's actually hard to imagine how far technology has moved here, how much leaps and bounds it has taken when we talk, for example, about the Latrix um, digital mirror elements, because we are talking about 1.3 million digital mirrors. Indeed, it's just one chip the size of a fingernail. And that contains 1.3 million tiny little pixels that flap up to 5,000 times per second. And with that, they can project a video onto your road. We go with high performance LEDs into that or onto that chip. And with that, you then, as I say, you can have a black white video projected onto the road in front of you in real time. Wow. But this is not just a matter of art. This has a very specific and dedicated function. Right, indeed. We see also, of course, the potential to offer something new here. And that is that um, when you lock or unlock the car, you can project that stage to the car. You can project it to the wall up front or onto the road. And what we call, well, we already can have five different dynamic light scenarios with each one. And if you sit inside the car, you are free to go. On to your MMI and pick and choose which of these dynamic light signatures you want to choose. And with that, well, give the car its very distinct character. So all these are functions towards more personalization, but of course also functions that offer extra safety. Indeed, and safety is of course the big advantage here. Because we can have a light distribution now generated as it would be optimized for every driver in every situation. So he's got different sensors that can provide us. This. this software, by the way, is produced in-house at Audi, which is definitely another big um, key advantage that we developed the software in-house at Audi. And of course, in the first step, we optimized our matrix light with a much higher resolution. The previous one was just maximum 100 pixel or 100 LEDs, and now we've got 1.3 million. That's a huge step forward, which means you can have a much better anti-dazzle effect. Or here, take the lane light as you head on to the motorway that will illuminate your dedicated line. And then with the orientation light, it will also tell you where are you inside your lane, too far to the left or to the right. And this light will adjust according to your drive situation. If you change lane, for example, your lane light will lock, so to say, onto the new lane. And at the same time, other vehicles also on the road will not be dazzled. This carpet, as we call it, this light carpet will be shortened so that nobody will be dazzled or glared. And if you go through a construction site and you've got a truck, for example, on your right and a guardrail on your left, no problem whatsoever. You normally would go through it a bit more tense, but here, no. It clearly indicates to you, what's your lane? What's your dedicated lane? And how much space is there left to that track next to me? Which is a huge safety advantage. And we're quite proud of the functionality that is now here also on offer. 
clear advantages that the driver will instantly realize for himself. But Stefan, at the end of the day, we're developing a language, aren't we? A language, how we can communicate with light. That means it's also a benefit to the other traffic participants. Right, you know, exactly. It is communication because I'm showing somebody else, look, this is my lane. And we actually have planned to take this even further because we wanted to project elements onto the road. But here you've got to be careful what is allowed by the legislative environment because, of course, I mean, traffic signs um, are only permitted to be positioned by the legislator. So here, of course, we are talking to the authorities, but we're also talking about what will you project exactly onto the road ahead of you or what is maybe better to have it augmented displayed in your head-up display. For example, sat-nav symbols or indicators are not really sensible to have them on the road. But here, actually, a German government official told me it could be beneficial because when we went to Geneva to the United Nations and presented this, this German representative said, great, superb what you offer here. And he even went one step further and said, talking about symbols from the satnav, satnav symbols, and he said, hey, this could be good, for example, if you drive and you want to turn right here in 100 yards or whatever, and your light will indicate this, that will tell the cyclist next to you, oh, Careful, that Audi e-tron will actually head to the right in a minute. So it's a communication tool, it's a safety advantage, which could also be beneficial but for other traffic participants. Showing and telling me, we have to talk with the legislators step by step about which symbols could make sense and how do we, well, ramp up this communication. We think at Audi, and we will look at this and assess this in various studies with PhD students and universities, what shape should these symbols have? What can you understand intuitively? We noticed that's hard, that even a traffic light with a red light is hardly understood intuitively. They need to be learned. And so we are trying to gradually develop these symbols so that maybe at a later point in time, once we drive more automated, they will already be learned by the drivers. Now, Cesar, normally designers work to make something beautiful and delicate to look at. That's the purpose, really. But for you, it must be great that with your design, you can also improve safety. Absolutely, and that's very important to us. We, de we shape design elements, but a good example here would be this video that uh, in a, well, a situation we all know, a ball suddenly hits the road with a child following the ball, trying to catch it. And here we want to project onto the road like a visual light barrier. Oh, be careful. And you can see this with the, the, these lines running opposite directions. It's like a triangle on the road. So that everybody will recognize this instantly. Stop which, of course, should not be mistaken for a zebra crossing. So for us, it's important. What we design should be easily understood and comprehensible. Now, we looked a lot ahead onto the road, what you project onto the road, all to do with the headlights and what you do at the front of the car. But let's now also take a look at the rear of the car, to which end I'd like to ask Michael Krupa to join us here, because he's responsible for the rear lights in the Audi development department. Now, Michael, tell us, what has happened with the rear lights when it comes to technological innovations? Well, we already heard a number of times OLED and digital OLED, and that really is the new catch word. The Q5 facelift now for the first time deploys digital OLEDs. The big advantage of that is that he can now pick and choose what kind of taillight signature he wants to have. We do so with digitization. So digitization for us is a completely new era. Although OLED already started in, back in 2016, it now really, thanks to digitization, has taken this next leap forward. Because as was just said here, we can personalize the car, we can make it better to look at, but we can also increase the safety. Now, you mentioned one big word here, and that was personalization, quite offhandedly. Is this something that we really can count on? Yes, indeed. OLED is really predestined for personalization. Look, we love OLEDs. OLEDs, exactly what you need on the rear. It's it's a it's a area light. It's not like an LED that I have to well fit complicated into the rear with an optical element and distribute the light to have this area light. No, the LED is actually quite inefficient. You need plastic um, lenses, needs a lot of space, becomes heavier, takes up energy, and the OLED brings all of this already on board. It's a very homogeneous area light. And now we can take the next step forward by segmenting it. So the separation of all these little areas or the area into little segments means I can activate all of these segments individually, activate them, have them at a different intensity, meaning that the Caesar has all the leeway that he wants as a designer. And digitization is here very important. 
And of course, I said, Audit already came to the market in 2016 with the TTRS, as we saw. But now, bringing these two together here, so that it goes over the bounds of these limits, and we've got now new real light signatures that go well beyond what was possible in the TT at the time. We love to talk about this because we think this is a revolution on the car. Because now, suddenly, you can have more than just one real light. Yes, indeed, so this is a, and that for us designers is, of course, ah, well, it's, a, it's the icing on the cake. It's great to have it because we're really here working on what we would call a display on the rear. You can have these various segments and personalize them to your likes, or you can use them for communication. With one simple view, it's not enough. No, you can have one hardware to have different signatures. And for the customer, this is a huge advantage because now he can, well, pick and choose his own signature. And of course, I mean, you, you just, in the Q5, for example, you've got three OLED elements on each side. So six elements in each OLED, so 18 in total, as Mike already said, and they can be very individually configured. And, and of course, the beauty is that, I mean, the customer can here, as we say, pick and choose the signature that he wants to have. And um, when he sits inside the car, he just goes, for example, on drive select and presses dynamic mode, then he will get an extra light signature, which is a very sporty light signature on the rear, which, well, is simply done by a hardware press. So digital OLED here is, is great, but of course, you can expand this also to the windows on the doors future. So if you wanted to take the car to the boulevard, well, you would pick a different boulevard, uh, different signature to impress the ladies if you was one, or a yeah, different one than if you go and take your children to the kindergarten. But it's not just a playground, but it's a real benefit for safety, isn't it? Indeed. Of course, I mean, this is, uh, yeah, stick on the car, if you want, and, and the beauty here and the carrot is that with this technology, the challenge was to bring it into the car, but the great advantage is that uh, in the car, you now have a digital information and can use it, thanks to the light technology, to communicate to the outside. And that's really the, 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 the special element. And in a D5 facelift, here, for example, with this proximity detection, you see or you notice that the car knows somebody is coming up closer than two meters to the car, and the car will react by having all the OLED elements on the rear being activated, illuminated. And the moment that rear pa a traffic participant leaves that five, two meter area, go back to the original signature. So for the first time, you find that a car, which is nothing else but a sheet metal object for the outside observer, reacts to you, reacts optically. We call that car to X communication. Now with that, of course, for us, this has opened up the door to have, well, the light communication emit a warning and maybe even move on to more complex warning symbols and then to really make a huge contribution towards extra safety on the road. So, with modern light technology, roads become safer. But, as you say, this would only work if all the people in the world will understand these symbols intuitively. Exactly, that's right. We are trying to develop what we call a light language that is intuitively understood by everybody. Also, by all ages. It shouldn't just be limited to the younger ones. Also, the older ones should understand it. But for this, we don't use letters or words or figures. No. We use symbols and icons that are worldwide accepted and understood. And even colors are important, of course, here, to make it crystal clear what we're trying to communicate and say. And of course, we hope that uh, authorities and the legislative environment will also move forward and will help us to bring extra safety to the road. Now, Michael, this OLED taillight that's exhibited over there is constantly <laughs> flashing to tell you, show us what you can do. Yes. Indeed, this is the further, the next development stage, what we already started with the Q5, Q5 facelift. This is already mentioned. It. We've got three OLED elements with six segments. And what we're doing here, we're simply increasing the number of segments significantly per OLED. So what you see here is well over 60 segments. And each one of them can be individually activated. And that means they're coming brighter or darker. And uh, with that, when it comes to personalization, of course, you have a wealth of new possibilities opening up here to make our design still more attractive. But what's more important is, of course, that here you are now possible to actually ramp up your communication, like a warning triangle or with an exclamation mark. You can really start to have this communicative connection between, let's say, an autonomous driving car or a traffic participant who does not yet have that digital 
information available, and thereby communicate with this country X communication, establish trust, shall we say, and with that also increase safety in road traffic. Now, we want to drill a little further here and look further into the crystal ball of the future, because imagine we would have a material that would allow us to have not just one fixed tail light illuminated and used, but we could use this material and have this flexibly deployed around the car. Indeed, these are the challenges and the briefs I get from Caesar time and again. The orders you see here are, are rigid glass panels here. There's a two-dimensional element. But we talked about creating a sculpture, a three-dimensional element. And of course, Caesar wants to have that three-dimensional component. So we're talking about thin glass technology to develop the flexible OLED, the flexible digital OLED, as we call it. Of course, with one clear aim, namely to have my rear, so to say, maximum uh, covered by this display. I want to use the rear like a communication tools, a personalization tool, so that with a display technology, you can make a massive contribution towards communicative safety. Wow, I think this is a good example how technology will provide extra creativity. Indeed, we, we, we see this potential, yes. Even within design, um, that, that, that we, we, we can create the perfect harmony here between light design and exterior design. Because, of course, this three-dimensional sculpture could be used to stress certain elements in the body shape or elements that go from the rear to the side and have them quite spectacularly staged. And, of course, the safety aspects, like that triangle, should not be forgotten. And you could have them not just on the rear, but also on the side superimposed. So, I mean, you could have an almost perfect communicative light design around the car. There's one special aspect that we would like to address once more, and that are the light scenarios on the cars. Stefan, tell us, is this something that you will increase in the future? So, Stefan, I think the dynamic element is so crucial. We started with the dynamic turning light, with that swoosh that indicates which direction the car wants to turn. And, I mean, of course, at the time, we also had to talk long and um, lengthily with the authorities, but the safety advantage was given and was recognized. And, of course, at the same time, with our light scenarios around the car, of course, we... we well, open up a new legislative issue, of course, because, I mean, in, in, in Germany, you have to go around the car before you set foot into it and before you drive to check whether the light's working. And with that, it's like uh, a work we're doing for the customer, and it's like a joy to say, look, all your lights are working. But, of course, moving lights are much better perceived by the human eye. Absolutely, our eye is actually capable to take in a host and a wealth of information very, very quickly. But of course, if the light is moving, it, it, it helps you even more. And digitization here really has allowed us to make this possible. Of course, that increases safety because the movement of light, the speed, the rhythm can be perfectly attuned thanks to digitization to create, well, different characters for the various light scenarios, for the welcome or the leaving function when you lock or unlock the car, but in fact, really also with the information you want to convey. And that's important, that the eye takes in very quickly the information that the car is trying to communicate. So here we can see digitization really offers quite new possibilities. And we, as the designers, but this will become a holistic experience, bringing the digital and the physical world together. And we no longer just design light objects. No, we're designing the aesthetics of the light movement in future. So you can see there's a lot coming our way, thanks to digitization, to bring light to movement and um, meet customer requests, um, foster to new technologies. Well, I can tell you, we've got so many new ideas. And um, I call Stefan every day a number of times and say, hey, you have to push forward with the legislators. We've got so many new ideas that are important for safety and also for the design of our cars of the future. So thanks to the experts in the studio. Thanks to you having switched live and stay healthy. Stay tuned and see you soon and maybe also with a good light at the car. Goodbye.